Free A, free B, free C, a bit more technical, also a bit more risky because of your positioning again. Remember on free, as I jab John, and he's slightly inside of me, he's going inside of my hand. The danger in boxing is, as he goes like this, I'm throwing this at the same time and he gets hit by my cross. So he's got to be really switched on, really good timing, and be able to uh, slip out the way of this if I throw this right hand at the same time. Free A is, a, is a, a very famous punch in boxing. Many boxers like it. Mike Tyson had a, a beautiful overhand. He's going to go over the top of my jab with his right overhand like this. So, how do I hold the pads? I don't want to hold it on my face as I'll get hit by that and probably get my jaw broke. So I put the pad on my bicep and keep my head away. And then when John hits this, he controls his power. This is not a full power overhand from John. This is 50%. John moves his head towards his left, but his hand stays where it is, and then loops over my left arm, and then punches me in the face, and then if I'm still standing, hook, hook, hook. This is uh, done in boxing all the time. Takes good timing though, because you've got to kind of stay there, and then just slip your head inside that jab, and then go over the top. But the advantage is, I can't see it coming, because I'm looking at his head, and then something hits me from the side, so it's, it's a powerful knockout punch. Even if I've got my chin down, he's going to click my temple, which will take my balance as he follows up. He does knock me out, he knocks me out. Especially if I'm a taller fighter and my chin's up. Okay. But once again, it takes time in from John. He's got to wait to the last second because if he moves his head too early, I track his head. Okay. And we both get hit. But he gets the better shot. So John waits and then goes. And his elbow comes up and over, so there's a bit of an angle to this punch. Free A. It's a lovely punch, takes a lot of drilling to do. When you land it in sparring, it, it's a nice one. Free B, B4, body. So he's going to slip inside, cross to the body. Pretty simple, slide your leg out, bend your knees, throw the cross to the body. <laughs> and then the cross to the body. Oh, I just hit you in the head. And again. <laughs> so I throw him a jab, he throws the cross. Beautiful. 3C is more from Filipino martial arts. You know that the right hand's a danger here, so I've gone jab, you know what's coming next, right? It's the cross. So if he can pin this arm for a second and monitor it, it means I can't hit it as easily. But as I, uh, we'll turn around for this one that make better sense for the camera. As I jab John in the head, what he's gonna do is slip, uh, step off to the side with his left leg, turn his shoulders and put his right hand on my wrist. And all he's doing is he's just, stalling me here, he's stopping me punching. I want to go, but something's stopping it. As I drop this hand down, he comes back with a hook cross hook over the top of that arm. He can slightly pull that arm down if he wants, or he can just wait until I kind of move my hand out of the way and then pull over a hook cross hook. So in Filipino martial arts, they like to check hands to stop things happening, because if I stand directly in front of John, he can hit me with either hand at will. But if I control one of his hands for a split second, he can't use that hand for that split second. So he's limited to throwing his right hand, probably right hand, and then I've got counters to that. So basically, it minimizes John's choices and, and sets him up. So as I throw my jab, John puts his right hand on my wrist, palm out. Don't try and punch this arm. Turn your hand and put the palm of your glove on their wrist. If you go too high, it may slip off. You go too low, they power through it. Punch in the right hand. Why? You see? So if I've got my hand on his elbow, you can just kind of shove over that. What I want to do is put it on his wrist and then lean on him a little bit. See how his balance is off? So even if he does throw a cross, he's off balance. If he throws the hook, he hasn't got much and I can move away from it. So I don't just put my hand <laughs> This is stiff and strong and you kind of lean your weight into it. So John does it to me, so he pushes me off balance a little bit, hook, hook, hook. So the person holding the pad should feel like a little bit on their heels, which takes away their left hook. Because I can't put, if I want to throw a left hook, I need to rotate my body this way. If I'm backwards, there's not much left hooking going on. And even if I do, it's, it's weakened. So that is free C, and the C stands for check. He's checking my wrist. Check. Hook, hook, hook. Okay, so let's run for all those again. 3A is the Mike Tyson punch. Slip your head to the left, throw the overhand right. Bang! Hook, hook, hook. See how he met my arm there? He needs to adjust his overhand. There you go. Notice right, so how there's a gap between my head and the pad because I don't want to get knocked out. And John's controlling his power. 3B is across to the body. Hook, cross, hook. Beautiful. 3C checks my right hand so I can't punch it. And then follows up. 
Checks are really good if you're a taller fighter against a short fighter. So if I'm with John, I can check his hand here and it's hard for him to hit me with either hand and I can monitor this and then decide which technique I want to follow up with. So it uh, limits his options and gives me more, more choice. Those are the sectors 3A, 3B and 3C.